Okay, for our last example, let's consider geosynchronous satellites. So a geosynchronous satellite is a satellite that orbits the Earth once per day. It is synchronous, it matches the time of the Earth's rotation. And if you put a geosynchronous orbit, or a geosynchronous satellite above the Earth's equator, because it's orbiting along with the equator at the exact same rate, it will appear to be in the same position in the sky the whole time. It looks like it's just standing there. That's known as a geostationary satellite. So let's calculate what the orbital height needs to be in order to attain a geosynchronous orbit. So here's a sketch of a satellite orbiting around the Earth. The orbital radius is the distance from the satellite to the Earth's center. And we're going to be interested in the height above the Earth. So that height is the total radius minus the Earth's radius. Now let's use Kepler's third law that we just learned about and derive the radius and derive the height. So Kepler's third law says t squared is 4 pi squared over g times mass of the uh, object in the middle, that's the Earth, times that radius cubed. And we can switch around this equation and solve for r, the little algebra, take the cube root, or raise it to the one-third power, and we find that that orbital radius is 4.22 times 10 to the 7 meters. Now we're more interested in the height above the Earth, so let's subtract the Earth's radius to get that height. The Earth's radius is 6.371 times 10 to the 6 meters. So we subtract those and we get about 3.6 times 10 to the 7 meters, or 3,600 kilometers. Now the actual height, if you use the more complex uh, elliptical orbits and account for uh, other complications like general relativity, the actual value is, oh sorry, that's 36,000 kilometers. The actual value is 35,786. So we got 36,000 actual values, 35,786. So using only the physics we've learned in physics six, we have gotten remarkably close to the actual value.